Welcome dear pilots to our first Build to Fly video. In this video we show you a simple Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 upgrade for about 50 bucks which consists of a touch display and 3D printed case. If you enjoy flying with the Garmin avionics, this upgrade is definitely for you. Let's get started. Our hardware for this build is a 7 inch touch display from Waveshare, which you can find linked in the description below. When buying a used 7 inch Waveshare tablet, it is important that the back looks exactly like the one I show here, as there are older versions where the touch is not compatible with Windows. The tablet itself has an HDMI and VGA port for the image, two micro USB for power and touch and a 3.5mm headphone jack. We will now connect the HDMI and the touch micro USB to our PC and start configuring the display. To do this, right click on your desktop, open display settings and you will see that the display has already been recognized as a new monitor. In my case, I already work with two monitors, so the tablet is number three. Position the tablet wherever you like. You will also find the display orientation settings in here, which you have to set to portrait flipped if you are using the longitude or the GTN 750 or landscape if you are looking forward to flying the TBM or Vision Jet. To get the touch function of the display to work properly, we have to open up the control panel. In the control panel, select tablet PC settings and click on setup. Press enter on your keyboard until the text appears on your 7 inch Waveshare display. Then simply touch the display. Now Windows knows that our 7 inch monitor works with touch inputs. To test your touch display, touch and swipe on your desktop for the selection tool to pop up. At this point we can start our flight simulator. While the flight simulator is loading, we will download a necessary tool called Popout Panel Manager on flightsim.to. Unfortunately, I can't understand why Asobo still hasn't built this feature into the simulator natively after so long. So a big thanks to Hawkeye for creating this amazing tool. It is always stunning how big the flight sim community is. The add-on is an .exe file, which means it does not even need to be unpacked into the community folder. Therefore, we extract it onto our desktop and open it. Our simulator has started and we are parked in Sedona with our beautiful Cessna Longitude. Now we will use the Popout Manager to bring some life to our 7 inch display. This is the Popout Panel Manager where we will now work through the steps 1 to 4. Step 1. Create a profile for your current aircraft. To do this, we click on the plus, choose a name and confirm. Step 2 are optional conditions to automatically open the popouts. If nothing is checked, the display will pop out immediately after the aircraft is spawned. In step 3, we will select the panels in the simulator that we want to pop out as a separate window. Important for this are the comments left click to add a new panel, shift left click to remove the most recently added panel and control left click to finish our selection. We start the panel selection by clicking the start button. The window minimizes and we start selecting instruments we would like to pop out with our left click. Since the GTC 570 is our only instrument we want to pop out, we can finish our selection by clicking Control left click. Now everything is configured and we can start the pop out process by clicking the button in step 4. The panels will now automatically pop out. When everything is popped out, you will have this overview where you can resize or reposition every window. For us, it is important to have touch enabled checked. The window itself can be dragged by your mouse onto your new monitor. Double click on the window frame to stretch it to the full size of your display. Your display is ready for your first test flight. The transition from mouse to display can take some time, but surely will improve your skills as a sim pilot. To make the display look a little less naked, we provide you with 3D print files of two different housings for the display. 
The first housing comes in a GTC 570 design, which is perfect for the Longitude, Honda Jet and the GTN 750. The second housing is a generic enclosure, which does work great with the TBM or the Vision Jet. Thingiverse download links are in the description below. The housing consists of a back and a front, which are screwed together. For this purpose, M3 by 16 mm threaded screws with nuts or 3 by 16 mm self-tapping screws can be used. Since print quality differs from machine to machine, lowering the bore with a screwdriver will make your assembly easier. If you have decided to use the threaded screws, first place the nuts in the pockets provided. Insert the display in the back part so that the holes are on top of each other. Next, we can place the front and screw everything together. I use threaded screws at the top and self-tapping screws at the bottom for demonstration purposes. In addition, we have designed a stand in which the display can be placed at two different angles which can also be found on Thingiverse. Despite the tweaks, the back gets around 2 hours of print time, the front 4 hours of print time and the stand 7 hours of print time with my stock Anycubic Viper without any support structure. To round it all up, you can improve your cable management by using 90 degree connectors allowing for more flexibility. We hope you enjoyed this small but very helpful project. If you would like to see more tutorials like this one, subscribe to our channel and let us know in the comments what project you would like to see in the future. In the next video, we will dive into the world of rotary knobs and push buttons using Mobifly to further upgrade our 7-inch touched controller. See you in the next video, your build to fly team.